Hello friends, I'm Dee, about to react to this impressive vid. It's titled Rihanna copies Beyonce's hair care line. And fans are mad. Um, the dream is vile and he pits Rihanna against B. People are goofy. I don't know how you guys can think that Beyonce owns hair care. Everybody has a hair care line. Kenya Moore has a hair care line. Kenya Moore hair care. You know, that is not exclusive to, to nobody's Beyonce. So this is just stupid. Uh, Brianna, I saw that she's coming out with Fenty hair or whatever. Good for her. Expand your empire. Um, so this conversation is, is dumb. But sure, let's hear what they have to say. Let's watch. Kenya Moore. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. Is she gonna show her hair though? Like me, I did. About Rihanna's new hair care line, Fenty Hair. Especially the Beehive, because they feel like Rihanna is coming through and stealing Beyonce's song. Before I get into my topic, I- Rihanna, of course. Thank you, Batman, that she's dropping her own hair care line. People immediately started comparing her hair care line to Beyonce's hair care line, Sacred. There are some people who believe that Rihanna went and copied Beyonce. However, Rihanna has been working on this hair care line for three years now. She first trademarked it back in March of 2021. So she's been working on this for a while. And also Beyonce has been working on her sacred hair care line for a while too. Somebody said that she trademarked her sacred hair care line in 2022. And she first teased her hair care products back in May last year. So she's been working on her products for a while. And I think both her and Rihanna just happened to coincidentally drop a hair care line. I don't think they're competing at all. They're just trying to make money. Beyonce is looking for passive income. So her launching a hair care line is not a surprise to me, especially since she's known for her hair. Her hair is a part of her brand. So it was smart for her to take advantage of this. Also, Rihanna is fully invested in the beauty market. She's done makeup, she's done skincare products, perfumes. So eventually she was going to launch something for hair. Now the Beehive was a little perturbed that Rihanna announced that she's dropping her hair care line. And they were more so annoyed that people were more receptive to Rihanna's campaign than they were to Beyonce's campaign. Now, Beyonce did get some criticism because people were like, well, how are you gonna start a natural hair care line when all you wear is wigs? So Beyonce did a whole campaign showing her natural hair and she finally hair. got on camera and did a hair tutorial. Hair. This was the only way that she could convince some people to buy her products. However, people are not really putting the same pressure on Rihanna and the Beehive is not having it. <laughs> One fan said this, Beyonce shows her very healthy hair frequently over the course of her career with a familial history or hair care equals cash grab, not trustworthy. Rihanna never wears her hair nor history of hair care. Billion dollar brand equals nothing. Y'all quote unquote relatable queen, I guess. <laughs> Beyonce dropped sacred and the makeup lady is now entering hair care. This other person said this was Beyonce's reaction to Rihanna releasing her hair care line. See what you're trying to do. You stole cupcake swag. And now you all out here talking about I'm female rapper. You ain't no female rapper. Another fan said, Rihanna, this is weird. I'm sorry. Beyonce just released a hair care line. It's not selling, but why not let it be? You're no, always trying to ruin her businesses. How y'all know? Y'all stay know. pocket watching, it's, it's, but not watching your own pocket. Favorably I hate to reason. It. So the Beehive is clearly upset, y'all. And I'm not going to say that they don't have a point. I do find it interesting that people have reacted more favorably to her hair care line than they did to Beyonce's. At have least they? I dislike when these blogs and these YouTube channels that report on pop culture, I dislike when they are like, yeah, people are mad at this or the beehive feels this way. Like when there are obviously comments on both sides. It's not like you are literally going through all the comments and like writing shit down and literally going through it to get the statistics. You don't really know like what the majority is based on a few comments that you read. That doesn't represent 
the majority. Because I remember when I reacted to that Kelly Rowland video uh, that B with the T put up, where she was saying that, you know, people are online and they're really mad at Kelly. They're calling her a diva and da da da. And so many of you were like, no, people were not reacting that way. For the most part, people were in support of Kelly. And I even looked myself, and that is what I saw as well that people were mainly on Kelly's side. So I thought it was very odd that she was painting this narrative that people were against Kelly. Um, so I feel like these blogs tend to do that based on maybe their own opinion. They will cherry pick a few comments and be like, yeah, people are saying this because that's how they feel maybe. But it's very difficult to uh, really get a good understanding of how, you know, everybody feels on social media because everybody has different opinions. And it's like so many outlets, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter. So it's like... You, you really can't say how people really feel. I mean, sometimes you can. Sometimes it's unanimous <laughs> for the most part. But I feel like in cases like this, it's, it's really split. So you can really take the narrative either way based on how you personally feel. So I just side eye these blogs sometimes when they say things like this and they cherry pick and show a few comments. Um, Be With The Tea does this a lot. Impressive never used to do this, but she started to do this recently, I would say within maybe like the past year. So where she's showing like comments too and saying, this is what people are saying and people are mad. And it's like, are they? <laughs> are, are they, you know, giving Rihanna all this grace and completely on her side and everybody's against Beyonce? Is that the narrative? You know, so just take this stuff with a grain of salt is all I'm saying just based off of the social media reactions and i'm cool with rihanna dropping her own hair care line but i do think she needs to get on camera and show a hair tutorial the way that beyonce did and i know rihanna's gonna do it i mean she's a businesswoman she knows how this thing goes but i do think it's fair to she hold her to the same standard <laughs> now i want to no. get into a more serious topic this is actually very, very serious and very disturbing the producer the dream is being accused of some nefarious nefarious things so i'm not there's this I'm woman not. by the name of shanice mangro who goes by the artist. i think nivia came out and said some negative things about him i don't remember what she said but she kind of exposed him to some degree um and just something about him seems dark <clears throat> so i don't trust him named shanny monroe who filed a lawsuit against the dream and accused him of dv and sa she was his artist and she thought that he was going to do something for her career but he basically treated her like an escort he did some sick things to her he was very jealous and violent towards her and in some ways he treated her the same way diddy treated cassie and what's interesting is the same lawyers who represented cassie is representing shanny so that tells you something there has to be a lot of evidence that they collected for them to take on this case there's evidence of disturbing text messages You're between her and baby. the dream. In the lawsuit, she features. mentioned one incident where she went to the studio thinking that she was going to record some music only for the dream to lock her up in the dark and use her for his own sick pleasures. He would find ways to get her intoxicated and he would make her perform acts on him and he would record her and he would threaten her with that video. She claims that she was manipulated by him and completely under his control. She's from the Netherlands, but the dream kept her in the States and he pretty much controlled every aspect of her life. And she was basically nothing more than a pleasure tool for the dream. She really felt like the dream cared enough about her career to make her into a star. The dream would always say, I can make you into something big like Rihanna and Beyonce. I can make you a big hit like I did for them. And she believed it and she fell into the trap and she said that she went through nothing but trauma. And it's being said that he used his corporate business to fund his trafficking venture. So the dream was using his label Contra Paris to sign artists, but little did these artists know they were gonna be used for something else. And what I found to be very interesting is Contra Paris was a label not only found by the Dream, but also Jay-Z. This was a joint venture and they didn't specify what type of label it was. They just said it was about art. However, in the lawsuit, it's being alleged that the Dream was using this label for other reasons. He was using it to allegedly carry out his depraved behavior. And the Dreams label Contra was under Epic Records. He had a deal with Epic Records as well. And 
Some of the executives at Epic Records overlooked his behavior towards Chani. In fact, Chani went to the A&R, Erica Coulter, and she told her about what the dream was doing to her, but she didn't care to do anything about it. So it was just really a hopeless situation for Shani, and Shani ended up getting dropped by Epic Records because the dream refused to turn in her project. He kept withholding her music, and he kept her on his label Contra for the remaining of her contract. And it was just a really traumatizing situation for her because all of her efforts went to waste. She was used up and mistreated and violated in the worst way imaginable, and she didn't get anything out of it. She never got a chance to be the star that the dream promised she would be. The dream promised her that she would open up for Beyonce. He promised her that he would write big hits for her like he did for Beyonce and Rihanna, but it never happened. And the dream was really sick too, because allegedly he would use Beyonce and Rihanna a lot to manipulate Shani. And he would tell all types of stories about them. In fact, I'm gonna read some of what was said. It said here, Dream knew how much Miss Mangro loved and admired Beyonce as an artist. He regularly used Miss Mangro's admiration for Beyonce as a way to manipulate Miss Mangro, telling her that the only reason he achieved such great success with Beyonce is because they created a quote unquote sanctuary together, which allowed him to know Beyonce in a way that others could not and consequently, he could write the best songs for her. Dream explained that a sanctuary was even stronger than a spousal connection because it was about art. Being a part of a sanctuary with right. Dream meant that Miss Mangro <laughs> was required to disclose all of her secrets and thoughts and become trust partners with him. He said that his relationship with Beyonce was so close that he knew about Beyonce's pregnancy before her husband, Jay-Z. Dream reminded Miss Mangro sure, that man. she better be grateful that he was working with her because he was putting work on Beyonce's album on hold and that if she wanted to reach the same level of success as Beyonce, she needed to become close to or closer to him than Beyonce. He said that meant Miss Mangro should ask and follow his advice on everything, rely on him to be her main confidant, and limit her inner circle to only those people he approved of and trusted. Dream also told Miss Mangro that if she acted right, he would share the specific formula he used with Beyonce and that Miss Mangro and Beyonce would be the only two artists with those industry secrets. Dream routinely pointed out that he can make any new artist successful, but he was choosing Miss Mangro, so he expected her to respect him correctly. Dream frequently pitted Rihanna against Beyonce, implying that Rihanna was fighting for his attention and was frustrated that he was giving it to Beyonce instead of her. He said that Rihanna was begging him for good records, but because of his special sanctuary relationship with Beyonce, he saved them for Beyonce and that Miss Mangro could be a part of that as well. According to Dream, Rihanna was possessive over him and got angry when he worked with Beyonce. In an apparent effort to reiterate how grateful Miss Mangro should be for the opportunity to work with him, Dream told her that Rihanna would frequently send him flowers and other gifts. And he reiterated that Rihanna had to work to make him give her hit records and he was choosing to work with Miss Mangro instead. In one of their earliest text exchanges, Dream asked Miss Mangro when she lost her virginity, explaining that Rihanna had told him this information about herself, insinuating that artists he worked with closely shared such information with him. Dream led Miss Mangro to believe through manipulation and coercion that if she allowed him to completely control every aspect of her life, they could create the ultimate quote unquote sanctuary that would surpass anything he accomplished with Beyonce or Rihanna. When Miss Mangro questioned the idea of the sanctuary or asked Dream <laughs> to clarify what he meant, she would receive evasive responses like this. I'll let you know after we win 10 Grammys together. Right now, you just have to be free and let me undress you emotionally. Do I can know what's underneath your heart. For a new artist, the thought of becoming the next Beyonce or Rihanna was obviously intoxicating and Miss Mangro was willing to work as hard as possible to make her recording dreams come true. This is just so weird and creepy. And what does the yeah. dream mean by he created the sanctuary with Beyonce? 
Like, what the heck this is that? This is bullshit, That's so obviously. Weird. Now, I do know that the dream well, he does said. work very closely with Beyonce. He has worked on a lot of her projects. He worked on her latest album, Cowboy Carter. And he's very much in Beyonce he and Jay-Z's weird. inner circle. Like I said, he did create Contra Paris with Jay-Z. That was a joint venture. And even though this lawsuit <coughs> doesn't target the Carters, it should be concerning because it's hitting a little too close to home. Very close. First, you had We're Diddy being exposed, and everybody knows Jay-Z and Diddy are super tight. Now you have somebody directly from Jay-Z and Beyonce's inner circle being exposed to. This doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. And there are some people who believe that Jay-Z will be the next one to be exposed. I don't know. I don't know. But I do hope that if something is going to hit the fan... Beyonce has her things packed and ready to go. Fair okay, Beyonce, Beyonce you cannot be caught up in this because people are going to say that you are complicit. So you need to really prepare cute. for your exit because it seems like these expos. Is this a dress or two pieces? So you need to prepare. I need to go and see if she ain't got, some <laughs> got something similar. Hmm. I'm running through Google. It's real cute. Prepare for your exit because it seems like these exposés are slowly finding its way towards Jay-Z. And it's not looking they match. good. I'm just saying. It's not looking good. But anyway, tell me what y'all think. Very weird. Very trifling. Um, if this is true, I'm just very confused. But, you know, everybody's different. People can be brainwashed in different ways and believe different things. But... This just didn't make any sense at all whatsoever. I'm very curious how old she is, you know, if she believed these things. Um, but, yes, hopefully the truth comes out. Uh, but, yeah, I just don't trust him or his face. You know, I never have. So I would not be surprised if this is true and he was you know, feeding her this false dream in order to take advantage of her. Uh, these people of this industry, very, very sick. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!